Let's talk with DJ Cappuccino. Thank you for listening to Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. And if you're listening, please click on like or subscribe. We value your comments. We value your criticism because that's how the podcast will grow. Thank you again for viewing. Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. My grandfather was once the chairman of Orlando Pirates. Mm. The same position with Dr. Ivan. So he was in Soweto uh, at some point in his life. Then That's why uh, pirates, like the whole family loves pirates. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Pirates is in, is in our plan. I can tell you, uh, my family was very, very, very highly involved in the political shenanigans, uh, the freedom <laughs> fighting. Both parents, you didn't see uh, more of them when you were still very young? Uh, not, uh, not a lot. In fact... Uh, so we I stayed for a short stint, and then I went. My, when my grandfather came back, he took us. We stayed with him, and my parents. And uh, he, I think he for, forced my parents to come and stay together with us. It took long for us to integrate to become a family together. Ish. You know. But about the other what is it? Yeah, there was a time I was even calling the domestic worker my mother, uh, and I can tell you, mm-hmm. when things were tough in the family, they are the ones who who donated things to, to my family. Mm. Uh, that I heard from my father and other people. They, we lived off hand, handouts when things were rough. There was mm. a time my grandfather was very well established before he left. Yeah. And then because the apartheid, you, you know, he was the minister of interior in the Loire parliament, my grandfather's first sponsor. Now that's when you go to here. Yeah. Mm. Now my grandfather was refused entry to bury his first one son. And they were also refusing him to, they, was all, they were also refusing his body to come back. <coughs> Let me tell you something that is very personal to me, ne? Mm. and that I will never ever forget. I mean, I remember uh, when I was growing and I was in high school, ne? I was playing around. I just wish you like the university can still continue. Uh, uh, to be that platform for people to kill poverty. People are not moving out of the system. People are not graduating. It does not only affect those people. It does. It affects other families. Just talk with DJ Cappuccino. Welcome to another episode of Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. Uh, you are with Fortune Maswangani, also known as DJ Cappuccino. Today I'm with the attorney, Lord. Ramusi. Uh, welcome to Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. Lot. Thank you, DJ Cappuccino. How are you doing, my brother? Uh, I'm fine, thanks. And how are you, my brother? Good, man. Good. How was Kagabni? I know that we are shooting and it's late. Were you in court? Kachoku, what was happening? Yeah, no. I, st- I, I started off at court in the morning. Mm. Yeah, and then by midday, I was done and then back in the office. Yeah. Some consultations. I see something is happening. You're losing nicely again, man. Yeah, no, I've been working on myself. I wake up at five o'clock every day. I've got a petrol personal trainer. Um mm. he's doing his name is A B. Okay. Yeah, I am he's, he's doing from, from which gym? I got an active Thornhill. Thornhill? Yes. A B. Why I haven't seen you there, Good Thornhill. No, five Maybe o'clock. you go early. I go very early. Five o'clock and then by seven o'clock I'm back. Home mm. and then half past seven I'm in the office. Negro ya go Jimmy ya go the village. No, no. Go go pita muka. Oh, they call it the village. I didn't know. It's the villages. I didn't know that. Yeah, good man. Not man. Tell me about your background. You know, uh, I know you're not very old, but you feel out like uh, most of us African children we have history, and we have ups and downs. Like, what do you recall about your childhood? My childhood. Uh, well, I can tell you, uh, my family was very, very, very highly involved in the political shenanigans, uh, the freedom <coughs> fighting. Um, so, me and my younger sister Mary Jane mm. had to be all over the country, different places. I mean, 
Uh, my grandfather went to exile. Uh, he lost his firstborn son, 1979, uh, who died in Swaziland. He was killed in Swaziland by the apartheid. By the regime? Sorry, yes. Ah, he was a commander sorry. of Mkondowesi, uh. the urban, the Transvaal urban machinery, meaning he was he commanded the first generals of the South African National Defence Force. I mean, I'm talking about generals Puyanda. Mm. and General Soli Chokwe. Mm. Yes, he, he was their commander mm. at that base where he helped Solomon Matlangu to cross the country when he, he ended up getting getting caught. Mm. He mm. was the commander there. Oh. So, so we're deep, we, we've got deep root politics of freedom fighters, but obviously we, we were not expecting anything from 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 the country i think they were doing it out of their own goodwill mm. you know that and me and my younger sister mary jane when we were born i mean i'm two years older than her but we were moving we we, we moved to mafi king uh when my grandfather how, how old were you by then i think we were two i was two years old mary jane was still one mm. one uh, my mother was taken uh to America by my grandfather, who was in exile there. Uh, your grandmother is it from uh, your maternal side or paternal? Was it from your was it your from your father's side or your mom's side? What, what do you mean? The grandmother, what, the grandfather. Oh, what, the grandfather what? was my father's father. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, mm. He got my mother to go to go to America mm. uh, in Chicago, and then uh, we went to Mafike. In Montsiwa. Yeah. And we stayed there, I think, for a year or two. And then we went to Soweto uh, in Dube. Mm. My grandfather was once the, the chairman of Orlando Pirates. Mm. In the same position with Dr. Ivan. So he was in Soweto uh, at some point in his life. Then That's we, why uh, Pirates, like the whole family loves Pirates. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Pirates is in, is in our blood. Mm. Oh, but, but the political influence, Lord, where is it coming from? Your grandfather? Yeah, my grandfather mm. from a very... Look, he, he started school very late. He started school, I think, grade one, when he was about 24 years old. <gasps> yes, and then he ended up uh, completing his studies, he became friends with, very good friends, with Eduardo Montani. You know Eduardo Montani? Montani. The one who freed Mozambique. Mm. Is it Mozambique? Yeah. Uh, who started the Free Limo movement. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, they were very good friends. They met in school at a place called La Mana. Mm. Mm. La Mana was a missionary school. Okay. They became very good friends and then they separated when they had to go to different universities. Mm. So when you were moving to Montsiwa, then you are in Dube. You are moving with your father when your mom is in exile, like is in Chicago. Yeah, my mother was in Chicago, and then uh, my father was around. He was. Uh, I think there was a time, the police wanted to arrest him, and his friends. I think yeah, that's what I was told. Obviously, when yeah. later I grew up, yeah. yeah. But that was a short while. But you didn't see much of them. Both parents, you didn't see. Uh, more of them when you were still very young? Uh, not, uh, not a lot. In fact, uh, so when <coughs> I stayed for a short stint, and then I went, my, when my grandfather came back, he took us. We stayed with him. And my parents, and uh, he, I think he for, forced my parents to come and stay together with us, you know. Mm -hmm. And then uh, um, my mother found a job. So my, Corey, uh, we, we, it took long for us to integrate, to become a family together. Ish. You know? But apart from what is it? Yeah, there was a time I was even calling the domestic worker my mother. Because she was there all the time. Yeah, because generally I thought it, she, she's family though. She was mm -hmm. married to uh, my father's cousin. Mm -hmm. But she was working for my, for my, she was helping us out. That's when you were still called Dube? No, that's yeah. when we, we went to Botok. Botok. Yeah, my father, my grandfather had a house school. He liked, he was staying there. Mm. 
was staying there. Because I know uh, there's a certain sense of pride from the Batipakobu talk, you know. I still remember your dad talk. I don't know if you want to prove a point. Yeah, I don't know if you want to So now I understand the roots. Originally, they were from Butok. Yes, yeah. uh, originally we were from Butok. Well, uh, and we love that place because, uh, and I can tell you, mm-hmm. when things were tough in the family, they are the ones who who donated things to, to my family. Mm. Uh, that I heard from my father and other people. They We lived off hand, handouts when things were rough. There was mm. a time my grandfather was very well established before he left. Yeah. And then because the apartheid, you, you know, he was the minister of interior in the Lewa parliament, mm. the Lewa government. Mm. Mm. Yeah? And then there was a time, I think there was a warrant for his arrest which led for him to flee, to, to leave the country mm. and go into exile, you know. So what my father told me was that things were, were very nice at some point and then uh, in a space of a week, everything just went down and we became very, very poor, very poor. And just just yeah. a second. Yeah. My father was, was doing LLP at the University of Limpopo, University of the North. He even had to drop out. Mm. Drop out to go and take care of uh, his mother and his younger brother. Was it things went bad because of involvement in politics? Yes, because uh, my grandfather was a pillar to to the family, mm. to the entire family. I'm not, and I'm not talking about uh, our direct family as in my grandfather, extended, my father, yeah, extended everyone, yeah, everyone. In fact, I'm told there was a time he connected electricity for everyone in the whole street. Wow, you know there was no electricity at that time, mm. you know, but that whole street, he made sure the electricity is there for them, and he he he, he paid for everyone. Mm. He paid for that electricity, but yeah, uh, when he left, things became very 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 bad, and. Uh, because of the way he was treating people before he left, yeah, people felt obliged to, to take care of to take care of the oh, family. He had to leave, and you people had nothing, no nothing. one to take care of you. Nothing. Now, but me, I, I wasn't. We were not born mm. yet. I'm talking. About I understand. Like at yeah, a, yeah. At an earlier stage, I think he left in 1978 or 76, mm. and then uh, things went south. The, the son left before. The son just left. He just left. Like today we're sitting like this uh, as a family. Tomorrow he's gone. He just left uh, our exile without telling anyone where he's going. And remember the sad thing about those days. You never had a cell phone to say, don't worry, I'm safe. Yeah. it Like you leave your family wondering, where did this person go? Yeah. And let me tell you something. He left and then in 1979, uh, he passed away. Uh, that's his firstborn son, my grandfather's firstborn son. Now that's when you go to here. Yeah. Mm. Now my grandfather was refused entry to bury his firstborn son, and they were also refusing him to. There was all, they were also refusing his body to come back <coughs> to South Africa to be buried in in the country. But it ended up happening. I'm not sure. I think there was interventions from, from the ANC at that time, mm. including Mama Wayne Mandela. They found yeah. a way. Yeah, they made sure, like he, he comes back in the country to be buried here. Buried here, and yeah, he was buried, and then my grandfather came back at some point, and then uh, he, he was a, an attorney, mm. was a social worker and an attorney. No, a psychologist, a social worker, soon, and then he 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 started operating his firm again, his law firm again, and gradually the family came came back. Oh wow! Yeah, mm. but tell me about as you told me, like you were moving around and not with your parents all the time. Tell me about when now you had to unite as a family because I I think you you very close. Like when I met you. And when I met your father, 
I saw a closed knit family that is so open because uh, every time I'll come to visit at your house, you know how your dad used to talk to all of you. He was just a free man. Hey, what, 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 what? And I saw that family that is so tight. How, how, how was that transition from now you have to start to live together? Mm. Mm. No, it was, uh, I think, the way my father was raised, man. He, mm. he was raised by good, good people. He was, he was fortunate. Uh, he was taught love mm. at a very young. He was the middle child, but uh, he took a lot of responsibility. Um, especially after his older brother passed away. Mm. He to, became, to, to, to hold the whole family. Yeah, to hold the family. Yeah. He, he sacrificed LLB and became a teacher. Mm. And he was a very he was very smart with the literature. Uh, uh, literature. He, could, he could teach you something uh, and you can relate to it very easily mm. because of what uh, how he is explaining it to you. Mm. You know, uh, I mean... Like you are saying, when you when you came to when you came to the, to our house, I remember you used to come uh, with uh, who's Rito's brother, Jay. Yeah, Jay yeah. from one. Yeah, you see, I'm remembering now. And then mm. he could relate with everyone. Yeah, uh, he had this gift, of especially when there were pirate uh, matches, <laughs> uh, pirate and cheese matches. Yeah, yeah, I would uh, make sure we arrange. They either we either go to Jay's or we come to my house. We we'll watch soccer and. Sometimes you'll find that pirate scores, yeah. <clears throat> and your dad will go like, "I don't like this goal." So he will, <laughs> he will act like he's not celebrating, <laughs> <laughs> and all that. But I, what I saw is that close knit family. So, besides the whole family, like extended, I want to know, Hore, when you marry Jane, your mom and him comes, where do you start to to live in the same house? Where yeah. was it? Yeah. Um, I was explaining, uh, he was very fortunate uh, to have lived in a very loving environment. I mean, uh, Anna, he grew up in Soweto, my father. Mm. He grew up in Soweto at a time where it was rough, but uh, the Soweto community in Dube mm. ne, was very close. You know, the, my grandfather and all, some of the, some, uh, the leaders at that community at that time, mm. you know, I mean, everything was was politicized you know you know but uh, they were able to to hold together i mean he was surrounded by different families mm. uh, the soweto community was something else man at that time and then it just preached unity you know everyone had to be together i think even the politics mm. uh, it's not the same now when, when uh, with black people because the black people were forced to, to unite be together. to yeah. be together yeah. and and uh, we, uh, everyone shared everything Mm. And those principles, uh, they lived in him, uh, even uh, after the, those situations. When he, when we started um, living, Lekobuto Kwai kept on t- uh, preaching about this thing of sharing with others. Let's be together. He instilled, yeah, let's be together. Mm. You know, he he instilled love in 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 in, in us, and uh, it was easy for us to to become a family again. You know, I don't want to make this interview about your father. Ne? Yeah. Mara, I believe you have that fondest memory uh, about him that you cannot forget. Yeah. That thing, you know, and I, th- I also believe you that there are many. Mara, you can maybe have one or two that maybe they top the list. Oh, uh, I've got many. Mm. Uh, Something that you think, Corey, it has built you to be the person that you are no. today. Let me tell you something that is very personal to me, ne? Mm. and that I will never ever forget. I mean, I remember uh, when I was growing and I was in high school, ne? I was playing around a lot. And one day... What is playing around, sir? Like I, I, I was not taking my, my, my books and oh. my stuff serious. Okay. I, 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 I kind of forgot. Uh, drifted off mm. and I don't want to say what I was doing you know mm. yeah I was a, I was I was a boy doing boy things mm. yeah. and then uh, grade 11 second time yeah. mm. for the first time in my life I failed I failed the term mm. the report came and 
not a subject i failed the term you know yeah yeah uh, i remember this is the fondest and i think it's something that changed the way i looked at things um i sat with him uh we said kore he he didn't he didn't shout and and blame and you know make me feel very small or anything like that he just told me this is life eh mm. and then he waited for the family my sisters my my mother to sleep I was with him at around half past 12 in the early in the morning and he told me that look i didn't want to want to reprimand you in front of everyone mm. and uh, i'm not reprimanding you i'm just telling you that uh, when you fail as my son it means i'm the failure mm. it means i failed means i failed to to raise you properly to it means i failed to get you to pass that grade your failure reflects on me yeah as a it's, sorry, uh, it's not his fault it's not my fault it's his fault but i knew it's not his fault mm. it's my fault the next the next i failed because i failed english english was a uh, first language yeah no i failed the standard i failed the the term because i failed english the next term i was the best student student in the whole in the whole grade mm. with english he helped me yeah who were doing macbeth you know macbeth and yeah. three convocations william shakespeare yes i can imagine the drama how he would dramatize it yeah yeah but he, he taught me macbeth mm. and the three convocations and i can still i can still explain them even now because uh that was something we did together we wow. did that and i was number one. i was number one in the whole standard all all the children in grade 11 mm. i was number one in english and i think that's a powerful thing he said sometimes we don't know how our actions reflect on it could be parents or people who believe in us yeah uh, the whole family you could be doing something but it reflects to even people who believe in you friends there are people that when you let them when you actually you go down you also let them down you mm. see it shows that each and every person has a certain uh, sense of responsibility that goes beyond the end the way Mm. no yeah, that's i think true. it's really 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 possible very much so mm. true and and i think or at the end of the day everything depends on you mm. who you want to be as a person yeah yeah it's up to you you know you are the one who who sleeps alone at night mm. who, who who thinks about these things before you sleep mm. or when you when you wake up early in the morning mm. you have that time where you think about yourself you reflect there's no one who doesn't do that mm. 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 yeah Now when I met you we were playing soccer got half and we were playing against you uh, it was you and Kobe as the France France strikers and you gave us trouble uh, I think at some point we had to negotiate that one of you either Hatsene or something and the first game I think you guys beat us 10 something but the second one we improved and but it was nice it was fun yeah. there and I knew your father but I didn't know you Yeah. Then I got to learn or who's your dad. Yeah. And I was just so excited because I really loved your father because he raised me literally when I was in, when I came to Pulukwane full time. He's kind of taking me under his wings but in a sense of you know showing me so many things how things work. Be careful of these people. Check your social life. Hey, I saw you guy Galbo Mang, but how will I? That's what things I would learn from your dad and Uh, I still even remember that he taught me how to even drink wine. Mm. How I must have it with. You know how you used to dramatize everything and all that. But fine, um then we got to relate you and me. Especially eh hey, I don't know how many legal things have I ever ever come to you with. I came with you to you ka many legal things. I think you know me in and out. Mm. But the legal journey 
What influenced it? Your grandfather? Yeah, uh, mainly it was my grandfather. Mm. Uh, and and after my grandfather passed away, uh, I remember I wanted to. I was very good in mathematics, in mm. science, at, at in, in in high school. But uh, my father actually convinced me. Told me my grandfather had a very big legacy, mm. and uh, it can't die. You know, as a lawyer, as an attorney, mm. and it can't die. And he kept on. But you could hear what this person wants. And he was telling you that, like, I couldn't do it because yeah. I had to, to survive. Yeah. We had no, to survive. He, yeah. he had a way of explaining things. Or a, mm. Look, uh, now I had to abandon this thing. I would have laughed. You know, in fact, I want to go back. He kept on saying that, yeah, I want to be uh, uh, Junior Ramusi, the lawyer. Mm. You know, yeah. And then... And uh, look at day, you, Mary Jane is a lawyer. Your, your younger sister, they... No, she's a property developer. That one is a property developer. Yeah, Talita. Yeah. Miss Talita. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then I just decided, after I started reading the, the book that he wrote, it's called Soweto, My Love. I'm sorry, I didn't bring you a copy. If I knew, I was going to bring you and Braclef, mm. uh, a copy. I knew Braclef a long time ago. Mm. And that, that, <laughs> Brapet, Brapet. Another name is yeah. Brapet, sorry. Mm. Brapet. I knew Brapet a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, by the when Peter Mugabe was still alive. My father was very close with Peter Mugabe. Mm. They used to come to our old house. And a pet and almost PC. Pet was always there. Yeah. Brapet. Mm. With the camera. I thought he was a he was a um photographer. He was a photographer. I thought he was <laughs> he was. But he was always there. I'm sure he remembers. Yeah. Mm. He was always there. Peter Mugawa used to be very fond. In fact, he was working with my mother. You know the funny thing? Many people don't know he's a PhD doctor now. Yo. Rapid. They don't know that. And then um, I think some are realizing and they are learning. And for them, it's like, when did you do all these things? Because all we saw, we saw you behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> you see, they don't know. Then the first time uh, I saw him at an academic uh, conference, I was like, Rapid, you are going to and then I made sure I listened to his presentation and I realized this guy is gifted. It's even beyond now where I can say, oh, maybe I'm half him or something. I realized that this guy is far and we got to relate in that level. We'll advise each other, also encourage each other. Mm. And oh, it was my proudest moment when I saw that he got his PhD because I knew that it means you can be a family man. It means you can be in business or businesses and still achieve a, a academic accolades. Mm. Mm. No, I'm, I'm, uh, obviously, I must say I'm very proud of Rap Head. And uh, I've, 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 I've grown right in front of his eyes. Mm. And he has never changed. He's never changed his body. He has never changed. I mean, he's the same guy that I've known since I was a kid. I think I was about 10 years old mm. when I met him, you know. Uh, but I, I used to be afraid of him. He's actually he's a straight talker. Yeah, so. he's a straight. Yeah, a but straight late, lately, I think because of PhD, he serves a little bit. There's a sivnyana. <laughs> he used to be very raw. Like, he'll tell you, I don't like this. Yeah. And and even if when he's not telling you, but you'll feel that, hey, I don't want these words from this man. Look, I don't know the, 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 that brapet. Yeah. And I was always sincere. And even now, I mean, mm. after so many years, when I see him, he's always smiling. How are you? How's the family? You know, I don't know the straight face, straight talker guy. You know, I know Prophet is the loving uncle yeah. that I've always known, you know. So now it's you, University of Limpopo. Uh, you're doing law. Any hardships? How was, uh, how was the journey there? You, look, uh, University of Limpopo to me was the University of Life. Uh, I don't think if I went to any other university at that time, mm. uh, I would have turned out to be uh, the Ramu, Mr. Ramuzi that I am today. Can I you stayed VK? Ne? I stayed at Madiba Heights the first year. Heights. The MBA. Who was staying year. at VK? Uh, v site was it Kope? No, we stayed. At, I stayed at V site. Yeah. I stayed at V. VJ. Mm. VJ. We stayed at VJ. VJ, no? yeah. yeah, we still, we all stayed at VJ. Yeah. I started my Vidiba Heights. I was there 
le bo pe pe chere a few guys man because kilm was staying there and yeah. i used to come visit kilm there we go nanda vj or vk kilm yeah vj and then we i moved to vj the next year the next year the next year I was at v side vj near the soccer grounds yeah yeah, yeah. and then yeah uh, i was with we go pe bo che che selani ne o dj kilm uh yeah a lot of guys man a lot of guys were there and uh i've got very fond memories there man uh like a memories sometimes we were supposed to go home we didn't go home we re- remained on campus mm. so you can imagine how much how, mu- how much of a bond we shared all of us was there any academic struggle when you were got there yeah it yeah, was, was 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 an academic struggle Uh, uh but what i appreciate about it <clears throat> is like I, i got to to meet different <clears throat> characters you know get to understand that life is not just all easy for everyone as students you know you can be privileged but you must know there are people who are really struggling yeah, yeah. because tef will teach you that will even make you appreciate that your poverty is better yeah. there are people who are really struggling there my man my first year mm. i stayed with this guy look i, I didn't want to go to tef mm. uh, my father forced me my father forced me he literally forced me because he, he didn't think what i was ready to be on my own out there in joburg or, uh, because of the way i was thinking you know mm. the, the life i was living so uh, and i and, and i i always commend him for making sure i'm there uh i stayed with a guy in uh in my room he even comes visits me even now i think he's working in government as an advisor to the mec somewhere ne mm. uh he he used to to get like 200 rand every month his mother was a hawker she was selling uh, t- uh, potato uh, tomatoes on the streets a street vendor Basically. and when i used to drink a thousand rands a weekend no 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 <laughs> no uh, <clears throat> uh i think my father tried his best man to make me as comfortable mm. uh, as possibly can i mean i uh, i was i was fortunate but uh, once he told me uh, his story that his father passed away a long time ago uh, from a motor vehicle accident and then they were left in in, in dire poverty Mm. Uh, uh so what my father did he used to buy groceries but he didn't buy groceries for me alone he bought for both of us mm. so we were brothers we became brothers me and that guy mm-hmm. uh, we started cooking together eating together yeah sharing basically yeah. sharing even my milk card I'd give him mm. if, if if we get food for both of us uh pocket money when my father sends me pocket money sometimes we share Mm. you know uh i had forgotten that you know because we were doing that out of our own good hearts you know yes. it was not anything uh to rave about it years later you know uh but he kept he kept on informing people you know go like uh, jankwas kept on what jankwas go pepe mm. they keep on telling me you remember you remember, t- remember that guy uh but it's 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 something that i've learned or there is there 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 is real poverty out there Ish. and and i'm glad the government is trying their best because even though he was uh, he had those type of circumstances mm. he still had an opportunity to go to university mm. and you know change the fortunes of his family and he did i mean now now he's working he's he's providing for that mother who was selling Uh, vegetables on the street to make sure he finishes off his his degree just talk with dj capacino is hosted by meropa casino and entertainment world there's so much you can do at meropa casino let me tell you what i do how my day looks like i start at casper restaurant i have breakfast the freshest breakfast ever fresh fruits yogurt cheese and anything that i need for breakfast and after that i move to wild things where i can even go to best park snake park 
But what I enjoy mostly at Wild Things is the pools. I swim until I get tired because swimming is exercise, it's refreshing, and it's beautiful. After that, I go to House of Ashante for a massage. They know what they're doing. I'm telling you, when those people touch your body, you'll never be the same again. After that, I move. I go to the casino itself to play the slots. I always win, and I don't know why. Every time I go play something at Meropa Casino, I just win, 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 no matter what. Then after that, I go to Marimba restaurant to have my freshest steak. And remember, by that time, it is in the evening. And after having my steak, oh, the lamb, the lamb shank, which I believe that is the best lamb shank in town. That's when I go to Jembe Lifestyle to have fun. It's nice. People come there. I network. There's always someone to talk to. There's always a stranger who says, hi, how are you? And that's the reason I go there. And after that, I go to a Miropa Hotel, call it a night, in those white sheets. Just talk with DJ Kapachi. And, and that's why, you know, when you're a lecturer, mm, which I think it's a powerful point that you're raising, when you're a lecturer, dealing with students, you must really uh, understand that they're coming from different backgrounds. Yeah. Sometimes you can be mean, you can unnecessarily victimize someone. Mm. Can't it? That person is a hope. Go, go, go family. Mm. And when you are doing it out of whatever reasons that you are doing, you don't know how much you are affecting the person's future. Uh, uh, whether maybe now disrespect or any other reason, then I don't know if you don't know this one. Can't that one say it? You are showing the whole family. It has a ripple effect. That is relying on time. It has a ripple effect. And I remember when, when he graduated, ne? he called me, told me, my friend, I'm graduating today. <clears throat> when he got his first job, he called me. And he told me, hey, my friend, I've got a job. Yeah, and he took me out for lunch. Mm. Hey, uh, was he in the same field? No, no, not in the same field. Mm. Yeah, I wasn't in the same field. Okay. But he's, 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 he's doing well for himself and his family. Oh, man, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he was showing me pictures of the house he was building. Mm. Yeah. So you can imagine from where he comes from mm. and where he is now. That's really, really, really good. Yeah. And yeah. then, yeah, we, we went through university. I mean, I met characters like uh, Fortune Maswangani. Um, I was yeah. just there. Uh, yeah. Coming from nowhere, by the way, guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I met different characters and uh, I finally finished. I met my friends, very good friends, friends that... I met people that uh, I think are some of my best friends I met there on campus. Well, one thing about that university, University of Limpopo, it has produced a lot. Yes. It has uh, changed lives of families yes. uh, through its own programs. Because most of us, we coming from not so nice backgrounds. And you would see it, Gotev. You know, you'd see where a meal, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very serious thing. Mm. You'll see it even uh, how vulnerable it can make you as a guy, also even as a girl, mm. just to have that meal. And many people have a Mola, they become breadwinners and liberate the whole family. You know, there are many stories that I know because remember, I started to help people get fees in Kiletev. And I would do it not as a program. I'll do it because of I can see there's a problem. Especially, you left with final year, you have done well, and you don't have money to register and to pay off the other remaining fees. I will try to push or at least get in the system again, finish the bout that you want. And then I'm so glad that some people uh, took the advantage and they've made something with their lives. You know, someone, even in a room interview, they just like the sound was not well, was also part of the students that I assisted Erelgotev. So I know the plight of people. And I just wish or like the university can still continue uh, uh, to be that platform for people to kill poverty. Mm -hmm. Because when there's constrictions, when there's problems, when uh, uh, people are not moving 
out of the system, people are not graduating, it does not only affect those people. It has, it affects other families. Now, not a sharp. Now I came to the university, more established than now. I came to the university richer than now, you know. Uh, uh, but it shaped my perspective and it made me the person that I am, because it taught me everything that I know, hmm. right now. And I'm proud to sit in front of people and say I'm an academic, because of University of Limpopo. Then, Lord, it's you. You graduate now. Yeah, graduate or oh, uh, one of the people that I met at the university was my good friend uh, 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 Jacob Hall. Yeah. Yeah, may his soul rest in peace. Uh, but uh, me and Lebo shared one thing in common and mm -hmm. that made us very close. Um, we discovered Okay, we met with other guys, Wore, T, what's Sepongwe? Sepongwe now he's working at the municipality. Mm. Yeah. Uh, good guys. We used to call each other young money uh, because of the rap group, uh, Lil Wayne and his young money, mm. young money mm. records. Mm. They used to, we used to like the, the songs uh, when we come back from uh, the Beshes. But me and Levo had a special bond because uh, we both had asthma. Were asthmatic, so <laughs> so we yeah. knew. Level would call me. Could call me at two, at two o'clock in the morning. Mm. Ne? if he had lost his asthma pump, he knew where to get a dose. He could just call me or I don't know what him knocking at the door. Just to yeah, or I give you, I borrow it to him. Mm. You know, a sharper borrow it to him. But we developed a bond, you know, and then he taught me. The politics of the system mm. of the University of Limpopo. Uh, I met the vice chancellor through him. You know, I met a lot of a lot of people. I met. I I started understanding politics. I remember at that time, he is the one who told me, and uh, he told me that for him to get. Uh, and no one, I can, I can, I can, I can see. I'm saying this because no one. Has ever mentioned it and I was surprised not to see the gentleman at his funeral and I think it was after his expulsion you know but it's the truth mm -hmm. Mutsibi told me and I think I owe it to him to tell everyone or uh, for him to get uh, accepted mm -hmm. at the University of Limpop it was Julius Malema who paid his uh, registration fee oh, and wow. made sure he was except. He told me this after mm -hmm. Julius was. Uh, uh, was he ex expelled or something? I'm not sure, but uh, he shared that with me one night. Mm -hmm. One night when we were walking down, down to to the rest, he told me shared that that with me that that is how he ended up getting into that campus. He was all. He was almost denied, mm -hmm. but it was Julius who made sure. He's in the system. He's in the system. And I, I'm not being politi political, I'm just mm. being honest, you know. Mm. And then uh, we, we developed a very strong bond. Uh, even my own wife, after university, knew her age. Yeah. But I'm going to go to the Come to the house. Come. And then he could take whatever he wants and uh, get out the pump. Mm. Uh, he even spoke at my graduation. He was one of the speakers. That's how close we were. Mm -hmm. When I graduated, he came there and he and, and Levo spoke. And when when obviously I heard of his accident, yeah, I was I was I was heartbroken. He was he was one guy who was genuine mm -hmm. and who I knew was going to become something in the politics of this country. Mm -hmm. And he was going to do the right thing. Mm. Yeah, may his soul rest in may peace. May his soul rest in peace. Rest in peace, uh, Le Mutsi. Mm. Le Mutsi. Yeah, I graduated and then I went to I went to serve my articles mm. at Bradley and Delange at mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then from Bradley and Delange I was taken through the ins and outs. Mm. They basically did a lot of commercial litigation. Mm. 
Uh, my principal was Johan Mulman, well-experienced attorney, uh, very good, very good litigator, mm. very technical. That's how we learned about these technicalities. Why do they say when you need, you're in trouble and you need someone who can come and add, live in streetwise, go talk to Lord? Why is that? Uh, for sure. I think, I think it's because uh, I'm good at what I do. <laughs> and I read. <laughs> and I read. I'm technical. Yeah. I'm technical like Johan Mulma. Mm. No, uh, uh, we, 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 we work, we go the extra mile mm. to make sure uh, the client gets what, what he wants. I mean, we work beyond the hours. Because they, they equate you to that guy all over more suits, man. Have respect. But you are a closer. You, oh, you, you are so good in... Remember, I think legal matters sometimes uh, get solved, not necessarily in court, but having to put negotiate. parties together yeah. and negotiate. So they say, no, lot, lot is a fixer. Or case a nyaka lot. I've had so many people who say, I wonder eh, Lot. That besides any other, even uh, uh, very high profile cases and everything, I mean, I, I mean, Shebeshit was advised to call you, is it? <laughs> yes, he was. And, and, and he told me that in prison, everyone was telling him, call this guy. Call this guy. And miraculously, jiggy jiggy, there's bail. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, and I'm glad where he's behaving now. Because you and pay attention to detail. Yeah, pay attention to detail. We, we were very technical. Very technical, yeah. Yes. No, no, but I know I know your work. Remember, uh, most of the time when I have problems, I, I run to you. Yes. Yeah, yes. I run to you. And, and you are there for me and my family. Yeah. And I appreciate that. But the training, uh, King, you went to law school first. Yes, I and went And served to articles. I went to law school first and I served articles. Mm. And then after that, I uh, wrote my, I, oh, I went to Johannesburg. Uh, I met a guy called Lakim Onata, advocate Lakim Onata. Mm. Uh, he took me in uh, and I went to stay with him. He just told me, no, man, uh, Pologwani is too small. He, he, he thought Pologwani was too small. Mm, mm, mm. And he said we must go to Joburg, and we left. And I ended up resigning corporately in Denanga, ne? Mm. And I moved with him to Joburg without knowing what I'm going to do there. But when I got there, like he spoke to one of his his uh, instructing attorneys, mm. and I worked uh, Mr. Ngento, uh from MBA as being into attorneys. Mm. And I worked there, served my articles, I finished them there, and then uh, I came back after finishing my articles, I wanted to, to write my board exam. No, uh, and then I came back home, mm. I wrote my board exam, and I ended up passing. And when I passed, all of a sudden, I was overqualified. I first tried to work with uh, there was this attorney called Matabata. Matabata, uh, I forgot his name. He, he, Jeff Matabata. Mm. But Jeff Matabata is uh, Tsepo Matabata's. You know Tsepo Matabata? Yes. The yes, lady. You just reminded me there's an email. Yeah, I must reply. Yeah, Tsepo yeah. Matabata, the, her, her father was a great, great, great attorney. Okay. Was a great attorney. Mm. Um, and he was very open. Uh, I was very close with him. I could I mm. could go and visit him at his house, and talk. And I I had a conversation with him. And then he told me, oh, "Man, you're looking for a job. Why don't you just open a firm?" You mm. know, is it when 2012 you established yes. Ramusia Tennis? Yes, and then yeah. I established Ramusia Tennis. I mm. think the following day, I drove to Joburg, mm. Victoria. And went to grab my stuff. He, told, he encouraged me to do it. Mm, mm. Uh, may, he, may he also rest in peace. 
Any hardships uh, when you started your practice? Because yeah. at some point you went to work as a magistrate. Yeah. So you abandoned the practice. Uh, yeah. Okay, look. Ne? Let me tell you uh, something. That was a phenomenon, actually. Ne? Because uh, it was not easy. People tend to think that uh, I was spoon-fed. Uh, it was not easy. It was one of the toughest things that, has, uh, that I've ever done in my life. In fact, it, it probably is. Mm. Because I thought, like, when you open a an office, our clients will just come. Just like that. Just like that, you know? And that's not the actual the actual truth. Mm. You know. Uh, it's not automatic. It's not and automatic. how many lawyers are out there? Yeah. And yeah. I can I can tell you, I can feel for some of them because I know I went through the process. Mm. You know, I I was once a seed that was planted and then I grew into uh, uh, the wheat then I crushed into pow that powder to become milli meal and uh, I was processed and cooked and I became bread packaged and put on the shelf to, be, to have a brand you know and, and you already know what to expect when you pick that brand on the shelf and pay for it but that there was a serious process to have that bread ready. You know, uh, you, you, you did serious struggles with, with rent, accounting to your own clients. You know, uh, I remember when I started my firm, ne? I only have, had like one office. Mm. One office, like the office was mine. I didn't have a receptionist. So it means when I go out, I lock. And I go out and I try to, to find work. And I, I'm, and I was not touting. Mm. You know, I was... It's, 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 it's very tough. It's very tough. And I don't think some of these uh, young attorneys know what to do. But it took me time to understand. It's frustrating. It's frustrating. Because... Uh, I can advise anyone or the easiest way is to go to legal aid uh, and try to get them to put you on their on their list of judy care attorneys. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Mm. Uh, go to Voscopion and legal wise mm. yeah, and register. You don't have to apply like a tender. You just register and then they will give you work. They won't pay you as much, much, but but at least you will have work it. and you start having some sort of re reputation, mm. reputation. But these things, if you don't know them, I got to do, know them over time, you know. Mm. And then once I got in, inside, go legal aid. Legal aid gives you basically legal uh, criminal work. I went in through the criminal work and then uh, I started operating and learning, you know, and then I ended up catching, uh, uh, having a bit of a reputation, mm. and then started having private, private, my very own private life. Yes. And then uh, as time went on, ne, I was, at Remlin, I was, I, 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 and then I, I started having a reception. I started having enough to pay a receptionist. Mm. I got a receptionist, and then I remember the office park where I was, at Remlin Square. I was with uh, Rabi Mashabela. Mm. Rabi Mashabela also... Uh, Shine Bright. Shine Bright, Shine yeah. Bright. But he's, he also has Mashabela attorneys. Yes, yes, yes. Mashabela attorneys. Mm. Uh, me and Rabi Mashabela were soldiers of the same struggle. Mm. Uh, he is the one. After seeing that one Ramosi, you have so many criminal matters. Mm. What do you do when the case is done? When you have won the case? Oh, I say, oh, chief, I just leave it. I mean, I I've done my, my job. There's yeah. no... Ravi Mashavala, he's, he's, a, he's a... 
he's a litigating attorney mm-hmm. and he's very smart i am not surprised uh, uh, of uh, regarding where he is now as an mm-hmm. attorney you know uh, he told me no look when you when you when you win a case for the time that your client was in in the cells mm. the, we, we the, are moving now yeah the, the government must pay i'm like serious I'm like yeah i'll show you mm. and then he showed me and then i saw hey this thing i can try and make a bit of a bit of money is that how you made your millions no i didn't make millions my clients made millions i just made like 25% <laughs> you know but uh i started working on them mm. and uh i had a lot because i had a lot of criminal clients mm. that's how we converted into the minimum that they would uh claim is how much uh usually you know what 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 i did i'd me out claim the maximum i was allowed to claim mm. and then obviously when we negotiate with the state attorney we 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 agree what we deserve so much yeah but how much are we talking about? like just roughly uh it depends on who you are and uh how many days you are arrested mm. you know there's case law that says a person per day Okay, what's the maximum you have ever received or the client has ever received and the minimum your client has ever received? The maximum is about 1.2 million. Mm. For those cases, for those cases. Minister of Police. Mm. You know, obviously now I've got clients who who are more repeatable. I'm not saying the the clients I was working I was helping are not repeatable, yeah. but these ones are uh, uh prominent you, members you, of the community that I'm helping your law firm grabs the 300 and relax what what is 300 1000 agree 25% yeah yeah and then you said you had many of them i think so yeah but not the 1.2 1.3 yeah but roughly but I, was, I think the minimum maybe it's 800 you know I no think. the minimum is about, no i get it i get it the minimum is about 30000 even 20000 sometimes mm you know can okay, no good 1000 yeah, times 30000 including the 200000s it what my 18 million no <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying <laughs> no, no 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 it's fine it's fine you know i'm i'm just bullshitting you yeah 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 mm. yeah and then yeah and then I, we we grew into the commercial litigation we moved from the office because it was too small yeah and went to the, the that office corner tawumbi in skuman street you started Uh, able to sponsor Limpopo Music Awards. Yes, yeah. at some point uh, a certain then DJ Kapachuna helped us a lot. Me. Yeah. And I was able to to sponsor it was it the first one? Yeah, it was the first one, especially the first ones when we really needed the first ones. Yeah, sponsorship. You, yes, you I remember came you came there uh, mm. and you you really spoke to me mm. and uh, I felt oh, this is a man with a vision. Yeah. And I'm going to try my best. And not that I had money. Yeah. Mm. Uh you know I worked you remember you called me for like three weeks. Yeah. Because I I'm, I'm I I I have so much belief in people and mm. their ideas because mm. I am also a dreamer. I'm also a, a person who who likes to to do something different. Mm. You know? No, you you litigated for someone I know. I knew you had money, so I, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have money. Yeah, no. Um, and then I worked, I worked hard to make sure that I, my target was was that one that you needed, mm. and I worked very hard to get that target mm. to make sure uh, you, the show doesn't stop. No, no, I really appreciate. Man. Yeah, that's. I, that's in my history book i i will never forget yeah. uh that moment i still even know the companies that came on board because remember when we pitched the idea nobody understood mm. from the department to every people were like we are crazy awards for what mm. and the private sector came through you know people with small business came through and said 
listen to your thing. And we, we launched the awards. And that was actually a memorable day for me because if we didn't do it that time, we wouldn't have actually reached where we are. It's like even with the podcast, we have 60%, 70% of the things we want here mm. uh, in terms of the plan. Mm. And uh, at some point, I was just sitting here frustrated. How do I start this thing? And for some reason, Dr. And he asked me what's going on. Car, no, we're waiting for equipment. Are equipment, what? I have equipment at my place. Mm. When do you want to shoot? I yeah. said, no, Tuesday we can shoot. I said, fine. Tell the first person to come on Tuesday. The, that person uh, came, then we started with an interview with him to test the system, test the mics, test how things are going. And right now, we're going to our eighth episode. It's a milestone. We started this January. Thinking that first week of January, he found me here on Saturday, frustrated. So we decided to start and then... It's a, it's a journey that I want us to go forever because uh, we'll never know how this thing is going to. But the plan is we, we also know that we need to put in time. We need to put in work to this thing. Really, I always tell him, I have a three-year plan. Maybe after three years we'll see what's going to happen. But he's always saying, you know what? God's timing is God's timing. Let's push. Even really, most of the time, I'm the one demoralized. Mm. Uh, I mean, you got called today, and you'll answer, ask yourself why. It's him who called me. He came and set up and said, we must interview people today. And I thought, I must call those who are my friends. Mm. And that's why I thought about you. Mm. So it's, it's the kind of uh, relationship that we're having, and we're still going. It's a, it's a battle. And there are people that we call for interviews. They, they think we don't qualify to interview them. And what, what? And I always tell him that, you know what, these people one day will be the one lining up here mm. for interviews. And when we say, let's do it in three weeks' time, they'll think right home. You know, mm. let's do it after a month or two months, they'll think right home. But we also know and understand that nobody owes us anything. We just have to put in the work. Mm. Put in the work. So, your Lions of Limpopo soccer, I've seen you, man. Uh, work on the club, put money there, make sure the club performs, make sure they eat. Even though you once uh, abused me there and called me to come and launch your soccer kit there. <laughs> and uh, the first game I came and I was never fielded. I was benched the whole time wearing the full so soccer <laughs> kit, hoping that I can get just five minutes and score those goals for you. What happened to Lions of No, Liverpool? unfortunately... <laughs> Look, it was all planned. I told the guys, or if we have a penalty, ah, you see, we're, we're going to put in Chapachino. <laughs> you know, when you are told, doctor, that no, let us lead in your Nagabo three before we can field you. Ah, then you know that uh, your career in the soccer. <laughs> no, you know, you could see that it was too competitive. No, 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 no. The thing is, I thought it's those soccer games yeah, of ours. Obviously. Yeah, but I realized those boys are running. Yeah, they are running and I could see you ah, right. We're going to have a problem. At some point I was asked, yeah, do you want to go in? I said, ah. You said no. Okay, great. <laughs> now I told yeah. them, if there is a penalty, let's have like a nice PR. We're going to have like more members joining the team on social media. Yeah. Let's get Cappuccino to go in there and, and take that penalty. Maybe, you know, it will be nice for our PR. Yeah. Yeah, wearing all these things of his, this fancy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, really Lions of Limpopo <laughs> initially was, was a movement. Mm. Uh, you know, back then there was this thing of, of uh, always hiring artists from out of the province. Yes. Uh, that's initially in 2006 when, when I started it. Uh, it was not about football. Mm. It was about changing the, the social status, status quo. Wow. Yeah, it was about mm. fighting this mentality that the artists from other provinces are better than ours. Eesh. You know? Mm. Uh, and then, if you can remember, I remember I had a lot of support, man. Support from Ifi Momel. You remember Ifi Momel? Yes. 
if you mom lie that was my my g she's still my g mm. yeah if he would would uh, make sure i use her her, her clubs mm. you know and then we get this young upcoming artist what twaiza who uh was this cobar capital movement uh was was he not performing in what was he do oh man yeah like mm. uh we did our own thing and then uh, it got uh the young alimpopo community to actually believe or no man this is the right this is the right thing mm-hmm. and uh, they would just support support for the sake of this is a limpopo thing mm-hmm. you know it grabbed attention i remember at some point uh um where we had something happening and then the next thing the premier came uh, uh, mr kasal matali came mm. with mr malemo and he was still the the youth league president mm. uh mr mapol lorenz mapol when he was i think he was the mayor yeah, the capricorn district the capricorn district yeah, yeah they no, came, they were on the ground eh? they, were, they came there yeah. and i was shocked or mm. hey, this thing has actually reached uh this type of leadership you know well, but that, that's what smart leaders should do uh uh be able to know and understand what's happening on the ground and all sometimes all you need to is to show face yeah show face show interest and encourage a program and if that thing dies well there are still leaders who do it uh, uh but that's i think we still lack yeah uh, right now i mean for a premier to come that 30 minutes makes a lot yeah, and i was very young and you can imagine mm. how much how much of a, a privilege it was for me yeah i mean we, we were not doing it to gain anything mm. Mm. but they just came there and showed showed their their presence mm. you know and uh, i think it was it was a very very nice thing yeah you know? the, the aim of this podcast you know, is to inspire and make sure that people can relate to what we're going through uh can relate with our background and realize in their hearts that they can make it mm. you know uh, sharing a little bit of that is like uh, we we'll still have time maybe where we're going to focus on specific areas but the aim of this podcast is to inspire It's for someone to listen to this and say you know what lord went through this i can win yeah i can also be someone else but what keeps you going what makes you wake up every day and say i'm going to do what i do and i'm going to do it best look uh, i didn't explain to you uh, caps when i open my my film i just i just uh, his face the mic eh? For, oh yeah i just uh, had my first born son mm-hmm. uh i think that's what pushed me mm. you know I, i my father and my parents are not those that 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 uh, pays for something you you are responsible for mm yeah, my father would always tell me ormona this is your son mm. what are you going to do if you palelo then go and get a job you know mm. yeah uh, and I, it, it pushed me i i looked at life uh, way different mm. i pushed very hard and 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 i can tell you hard work really really really, really does pay yeah yeah and I, i encourage you even now with the studio and alibra pet don't give up now i can see good things happening here mm. you know it's it's already looking very good you know Mm. I mean your your competitor or it's not even your competitor you are yeah front opposite energy fm should say a lot to you yeah we're looking up to them yeah you're looking yeah. up to them yeah but but you are in the same space yeah you know it says a lot mm. it says a lot yeah but um uh, and the drive to just help people man, to mm. to to help people in the best uh, possible way Yeah because there's there's so much coming in from this we hoping to in future uh host business breakfasts uh through the podcast we hoping to 
even towards elections to try to have a breakfast uh, about politics, like get a panel. We want to get the community talking, but most importantly, we want people to learn something from our episodes or any endeavor that we're doing so that we can change their lives. And once we change the mindset, I think we are going towards winning. That is the whole thing. Mm. Yeah, that is the whole thing. Lot, I appreciate you a lot, you know. We even spoke on Saturday uh, when we were drinking wine. And uh, we also spoke how we appreciate each other. And thank you for the love. Always when we meet, it's so nice. And I, f I feel the warmth. Wow. No, man. And I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Capacino. Thank you. I, I haven't spoken for the, for, to, uh, about all the support that you've been giving me, mm. you know, when, when everyone was doubting at that time. You, no, you, chose, you chose me, mm. and I'm forever grateful for that. Yeah. Yeah, you chose that you chose Ramusia Tennis. Later. Yeah. Another episode of Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. What an honor to be engaging with Lord Ramusi. For any legal matters, trust me. Uh see this guy. Uh litigation and criminal matters. Uh he'll help you. Thank you, DJ Cappuccino. Eta. Eta. One hour five minutes, ne? Just talk with DJ Cappuccino. <laughs>